But let's talk about the show. I'll do the full review later on tonight with Vinny. But a few notes. They did the two the two uh, dealer's choice matches. And uh, thumbs up and thumbs in the middle. I would thumbs not say thumbs middle. down. Thumbs in the middle for both. Well, no, not the matches themselves. Because I, I believe... <laughs> Here's the problem with these two matches, okay? The idea was, like, they, you know, Hangman and Swerve are each going to choose an opponent for the other. To, like, put them through the ring or whatever. So, both of these opponents, Toliona looked freaking great. Yeah, he did. And, God, let me tell you, for being 53 years old, with a lot of miles on his body... And very haggard My man. God, did Rob Van Dam do a good job in that match. But, like... The thing was, Swerve and Hangman gave them so much. They sold and sold and sold and sold and sold. And, like, the idea, I thought, was supposed to get Hangman and Swerve over is like, you know, these are the top two guys in the entire company. We got to find out who the best guy is in order to face Samoa Joe. And it's like, in storyline, both of them barely made it past these opponents. Hangman couldn't even hit this guy with the buckshot. He had to pin him with a, a, a flash cradle. After Toa avoided the uh, buckshot and laid him out with a Samoan drop. So this is a, 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 there's a lot of this in AEW where, you know, storyline-wise, I absolutely would not have booked these matches this way. But, like, in a vacuum, if you just want to watch great matches, Hangman and Toa was great. And, and Swerve and Rob Van Dam. I mean, I always watch these Swerve matches, and I'm always thinking... All right, this is the one where the swerve match ain't going to be that good. But every time, I don't know how the guy does it, besides being great. He's pretty damn good. But yeah, he had I mean, a it's... great match with uh, with Rob Van Dam, all things considered. And uh, they announced next week. Like, next week is a pay-per-view caliber show. They've got the Sting and Darby match for the tag team titles. Sting and Darby have never lost as a team, and Sting's never done a job at all. So they're going up against Ricky Starks and Big Bill. And then we've also got the, I mean, this is a pay-per-view match. Swerve and Hangman 3, and the winner gets Samoa Joe. And Swerve has beaten him twice. So, I mean, there's only two options, I think. One of them is Hangman wins, and you do one-on-one Hangman Joe. The other is you do a screwy finish to set up a three-way, which is what I think they're going to do for the Revolution show. And then we've got Jericho and Takeshita. And John Moxley and Brian Danielson and Claudio versus Mystico, Volador, and Hechicero. Not bad. Not bad at all. They also have a Tony Khan big announcement. <laughs> Not major. Oh, it's a big announcement. Okay. I believe they're going to be announcing the date of Boston. Boston? And I think that that is going to be the show that Mercedes debuts on. Money. Yeah. So that mm. will be... Th- and I think they'll do it probably... I don't know if they'll flat out announce she'll be there. I think they're going to do the CM Punk thing. Yeah. Where they just make tease. it patently obvious and try and build it up as a massive show. Mm-hmm. But I believe that's next week's announcement. But I don't know. I mean, hey, they could they could do uh, Okada if he ends up going there. Well... But Okada... Hey, listen. Okada is... is uh, he's negotiating with both sides. So... A lot of people are way overconfident one way or the other, and I don't think that you should be. I would say it's probably 50-50, and I I say that because I know people in both companies that think that's where he's going. It is not, you know, sometimes, you know, for example, the Julia story, not 50-50. I mean, you talk to people in AEW, and they're like, I think she's going to WWE. Talk to people in WWE, I think she's coming here. So (laughs) it's not like 50-50. But with Okada, it is. And both sides have money. And both sides want him. So we shall see what happens. And also with that, uh, I was thinking about this Big Bill and Ricky versus Sting and Darby. It seems obvious, one would say, that uh, Sting and Darby win the tag team titles. What? What do you mean, what? I guess you could. I guess so. I don't like it. You're gonna Here's beat. What, you're gonna beat Sting going into his final match. Mm, no, but you well, then the he young, has to win the tag titles. No, he doesn't. You can have the Young Bucks come out there, screw things up. And look, the only reason I would for a want, DQ. 
Yeah. They're not going to do a DQ. Well, I guess if you're doing a screwy finish with Swerve and Page, then you definitely don't want to do two of those on the same show. Not to say that they wouldn't because they have, but, you know. The only reason that I would want to see Sting and Darby win the belts is because you can have Sting lose in his last match in Greensboro and, again, have FTR go and chase the Young Bucks off and let Sting get a chance to celebrate and then set up. Nicholas and Matthew or whatever their names are against FTR and then you have a title feud that way you have the title feud that I think maybe a lot of people have wanted which are heel young bucks and the FTR that combination there I mean that's the only reason I would like to see that happen because otherwise you know the thing with Ricky Starks is at some point like you know, how many times are you going to beat this guy? How many times you kind of get him, get him up to a level and fall? Like, I like Starks and Bill. And we're talking about the fact they have no tag teams. I mean, they take their eye off the ball when it comes to tag teams. They, they failed incredibly with that. And you're talking about a company that had a zillion tag teams at the beginning. So I, I'm not sure I love that idea. Again, well, you listen. Can have, you can have them lose. If Darby takes the fall, you don't have to beat Sting. They've never been beaten as a team. This is a big thing. But I'm going to tell you what I think is going to so happen. They're, so he, he, they're going to beat the Bucks too and retire with the tag. Dog? Well, here's the thing. Here's right. the thing. There's there's two options. Option one is they win the tag titles. As many options actually. <laughs> option one is they win the tag titles. They go to Sting's final match. They beat the Young Bucks. Sting retires as champion. It is a happy ending for everybody in Greensboro. Okay. Yeah. The other option is that. Sting and Darby win the tag titles. They go to Greensboro, and the Young Bucks win the titles in Sting's final match. He puts them over, okay? Now, if you think about that, why do the Young Bucks need that win over Sting and Darby? They don't. If I'm Sting, and I've decided I will put someone over before I leave, well, the answer is, next week... Ricky Starks pins Sting. Now, here's the thing. Mm. That ain't going to happen clean, okay? No. They did two things last night. They had a segment with Sting and Darby and Ricky and Big Bill. And they said, Ricky, what's your problem? And Ricky said, in your first match in Sting, you beat me. And it has been bothering me for four years, okay? So, what better way to wrap up this story than before he goes out, Sting does his one job, and he puts over Ricky Starks on the way out. Now, they also did a segment where the Young Bucks were talking to Darby, and they were like, we've been back a month. You're ignoring us. You haven't texted us. You haven't done anything. And Darby says... I am fully concentrated on winning the world tag team titles. And he walked off and Matthew said, we're going to need to get through to him in another way. Mm -hmm. So here's the only problem with this scenario. The young bucks could screw sting and Darby allowing Ricky Starks to pin sting and win the match. Okay. Okay. The only problem is you will have to find a way to explain why Matthew and Nicholas cost Sting and Darby the tag team titles when they are getting a match with them in Sting's final match. They didn't want the tag team titles. So if they can find a way to plug that hole, I can see Sting deciding, I gotta, I'm going to do one job before I go. I will not go undefeated. I want to put one person over. And in, when you think about it, the Young Bucks don't need to be put over. If you're going to put one guy over or one team over, it's Big Bill and Ricky Starks. Yeah, and it should be Ricky Starks. And I like that idea. I think the one thing you can do is, as EVPs with their new character, we can give ourselves a title match anytime we want, right? I mean, if you wanted to, again, it would be might be a cheap way to get out of it, but you could do that because they're the EVPs. And they have this new smarmy 
character that they're doing where the yeah look we can just we can find people anytime we want indiscriminately for any reason and make you pay it by the end of the day i think those guys could give themselves a title shot whenever they so chose if that would even come up because again that may be overthinking how people respond to it. They may just respond so angry that Sting lost and Starks got the victory that if you're a fan watching, that's not going to be, you know, your main thing is not going to be, well, the Young Bucks just screwed themselves out of a tag title shot. Like, I don't know if that's going to be, if that's going to get through. Well, they wouldn't, they wouldn't it would say matter. it that way. They need a, they need a, a promo, which honestly, it wouldn't be that hard. I mean, you can have well, the Bucks say, any, listen. Anything over the next couple of days to lead into that. You can have the Bucks say, we have been tag team champions all over the world. We are the greatest tag team of all time. We want nothing more than to win those tag team titles, except it is more important to destroy Sting and Darby and retire them. That's it. Yeah. And look, if you wanted to go in the direction where if you want the complete... If you want the complete happy ending, it may cost you more. But if you want the complete happy ending for Sting in Greensboro, where if they do defeat Starks and Bill and win the belts, and then they go on and defeat the Young Bucks in Greensboro, well, then you have a new, you have a reason for the ratings all of a sudden. You have a reason for the ratings because Sting retires, and that's your thing leading into, I don't know, Forbidden Door or whatever the next pay-per-view would be. We're going to have the tag title tournament. It would fill some time. It would give you a reason for the ratings. It would give the Young Bucks a, a, a chance. You mean to, the rankings? The rankings. It would give the Young Bucks a, a possibility or a chance to, again, be smarmy to the rest of the division as well, too, in-ring heels as well as being administrative heels. So there's a lot of different ways that, that this could actually work. Here's also the uh, the other problem. With Sting and Darby winning. Yes. What happens with Ric Flair? The frickin' rankings. Oh. <laughs> the Young Bucks are unranked. Yeah. <laughs> they are unranked. And so if Sting and Darby win the tag team titles... Non-title match. Then Sting's final match should be John Silver and Alex Reynolds. <laughs> the EVPs cannot allow themselves to be put in this type of match. We're calling it a non-title match. I mean, literally, if you if you start <laughs> these rankings, and in the literally the very first month... The Bucks just go. I know we're unranked, but we're, we're going to give ourselves a, a championship match because we're uh, we're EVPs. Yeah. Well, I think I think Sting <laughs> is losing to uh, Starks. That's my prediction. I like that, and because again, Starks and Bill deserve some time to hold on to those belts, and it gives Starks. Again, I'd like to see more with him individually as things go along too, but we'll see how it all plays out for him. These glasses are bad. Just a minute, I have to change glasses. Let's all change something. <laughs> I need to change so many things. These are new ones, too, but I can't see with them. Okay, here we go. <laughs> He's going to change the red. The red hat pin, you had to get a strike. There was a bowling tournament. You gave away a picnic table. Of all the prizes, a picnic table? <laughs> this is terrible today. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Corn buckle. Huh? What was it? <laughs> Brian. I, what? What was that? <laughs> Come on, Brian. What's going on? Keep, keep going. On a lonely, okay. lonesome highway. That's all I have for today. Okay, well. Are you sure? Excellent <laughs> job, Granny. Shut up, Brian. <laughs> I had a note down here for some stuff I was going to answer. Hello? <laughs> yes, he's all right over there. Hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.